Hello everyone, uh, Fru here. Welcome to the channel. Uh, I am so excited today to be uh, the bearer of good news to talk about Snowpack for Python. Uh, it's one of those uh, revolutions of our time when Snowflake finally allows you to bring your Python code uh, into the Snowflake uh, environment. Now, I'm assuming everyone knows what Snowflake is, and in this demo, we're gonna dive in and talk about how you can get uh, started with Snowpack uh, using Python. And due to popular demand in my previous video talking about Snowpack with Scala, uh, in the comment section below, I got lots of people asking, Fru, can you do a demo uh, using Snowpack for Python? And we have it here. It's uh, I was literally drooling when this uh, when this came out, and I'm sure a lot of Python developers out there uh, excited about this. So this demonstration today would be a really good demonstration. We have a lot of things uh, to go through uh, in a very short amount of time. Uh, what I'm going to do is walk us through how to set up your IDE, so your development environment. Whichever one you use, you should be able to follow the, the demonstration uh, for us. Uh, more importantly, we're also going to see how to create UDF, so user-defined functions uh, within uh, Snowpack uh, with Python. There are different ways of doing it. I'm just going to go slowly, uh, show the different options. So uh, you can follow with basic examples or you can bring in your more complex models you might have built in data science, machine learning uh, into this environment. And then we're also going to see how to import uh, standard packages. So what Snowflake uh, uh, for Snowpack allows us to do is take advantage of a whole library of functions and packages that exist out there uh, XGBoost, Keras, TensorFlow, you name it, uh, bring that all into the Snowflake environment um, for, for your analysis. And then last but not least, we're also going to see how to import uh, custom uh, utilities. You might have built homegrown utilities in Python that goes around the, your company or your organization, how you can bring that all and take advantage of that within the Snowpack environment. So really exciting. We're going to dive right in into the very first piece of our demonstration here, which is setting up our environment. So uh, for the demo today, I'm going to use PyCharm, but of course you can follow with Jupyter Notebook or any notebook environment uh, that you have. So we have a blank canvas here, which we're going to use uh, for this. So assuming you're just starting fresh and you want to get everything up and running, you open up PyCharm. We have a vanilla PyCharm uh, here ready. Now, the first thing that we're going to confirm, depending on when you're watching this video, is making sure that you have access to the package uh, Snowpack uh, for Python. So in here, I have a bunch of packages. Uh, you might have to do pip install at the time. If not, uh, just uh, make sure and confirm that you have that package uh, available. So what we need is Snowflake Snowpack Python. So that's what's going to allow us to do the really cool things that we're going to see here uh, in the demo. Now, uh, if you have this installed, again, depending on when you're watching this, this video, you might want to do a pip install and install a wheel file. If, uh, the, if that's what's available, otherwise Anaconda might have that. So just make sure that that's available in your environment. Now, the next piece that we're going to do is I just have a config file sitting on machine here. And what this is, is just my configurations, my utilities, uh, uh, password to log in into the Snowflake environment. So let's go ahead and, and get started with a simple uh, code here. And this will be the code that we're going to use to uh, get uh, appetite wet with uh, Snowpack for Python. So let's just call it a uh, fru. Oh, we're just going to call this fru demo. The Python is a blank canvas. So like in any other Python environment that you have, uh, you can go ahead and import a bunch of packages. So you can go ahead and import pandas, numpy, matplotlib, uh, everything you can import in Python, you can definitely go ahead and do it in the context of Snowpack. We can now go ahead and import Snowpack for Python. We can import the functions. We can import sessions. We can import a lot of things. And this is what's going to allow Snowpack within the context of your Python code to take up everything you have, send it to the Snowflake environment, do the compute, and the results are going to come back. So you definitely want to go ahead and import a bunch of this um, uh, a bunch of these methods. Now, the next piece here that we're going to do is basically standard stuff that you do uh, when working with, with Snowflake. So the first one that I'm going to do here is uh, make sure that I have uh, connectivity established to my Snowflake environment. And the way I'm going to do that is uh, we're going to uh, get config so we can go read the config file. And from there, we're going to pull in my credentials and we're going to create a connection uh, to Snowflake. So that's what we're doing uh, here. But as you can see, it, something is not uh, very happy uh, in what we have. So we're going to go back above 
uh, we're gonna import a couple of things we're gonna import config parser and we're gonna import uh, OS you can safely ignore this uh, manually coding your, your username and password that's not a good thing if you're doing a demo to lots of people who are gonna be watching this video so now we have um, our environment set up not a lot of things happening here but uh, just to call out number one we have our snowpack uh, imported number two we've established connection uh, to our snowflake uh, environment now we can really begin to turn on uh, the heat so what we can do here let's just uh, uh, bring up the screen so what we can do here now is to say hey how do we uh, establish a session uh, that allows us to talk to uh, to the snowflake environment um, so uh, this is my uh, snowflake configuration with the username and password so now we're going to establish a session and this session is going to use my config parameters from above and now this allows us to interact and to send things to snowflake because what you don't want to do is run write code that runs locally all of this code that we're building is going to be pushed over to snowflake it's going to create udfs and it's going to run on the snowflake environment so now we've established our our session our session is all ready to do and the fun really begins we can go in and create some functions so let's just do something simple we're gonna do this really simple and what we're gonna do here is a function that I will call it uh, just a simple function here it takes uh, a very simple input It's gonna double that it's gonna give us a result this is any function you can write in Python so just think about your Python wizardry anything you can do in Python implement that function here right mine is uh, very basic you can put in a lot of things you can do uh, more complex transformations validation anything you want to do inside of this Python function go ahead and do that but this Python function isn't a snowflake function yet it's not a snowflake UDF how do we tell snowflake to say hey when we execute this code take this function create a function in snowflake which you already know what the function in snowflake is there are stored procedures and there are functions in snowflake uh, take this function here in python create it in snowflake establish that as a function and this is where uh, we're gonna go into the next part here of creating uh, functions in snowflake and doing implicit registration of those functions so what does the registration mean it's gonna tell snowflake create this as a user defined function in snowflake so the way you do that there are two ways the implicit way is basically if you go in and you add this command udf and you give it a name you tell it is it a permanent function you can specify a stage there are a lot of parameters you can put in here uh, to tell snowflake that this is a function that you want to create a udf on the snowflake side and you guys you're going to see this when we actually execute uh, this code so just by writing a regular python function and including this implicit uh, definition here implicit is basically just my term of registering the function now if we run this code it's gonna create a udf in snowflake and this udf runs in snowflake we're not bringing data back to python it all runs inside of snowflake so let's go ahead and see how we can test uh, this uh, udf now what i have here is a table that uh, has some information and we're gonna write uh, a, a query against that table and get some results so here is what, what we're doing we're saying hey go through the session we've established a session to snowflake we're going to write a sql statement and within that sql statement i'm going to select from my sample data uh, get a column but i'm going to apply a function to uh, a specific column uh, in that uh, table and what function is it it's called add where did we see add before we saw add in the function we've defined above the udf the python function all right so if we go ahead and we run this uh this would be a very uh, exciting one because all of this would uh, uh would actually execute in snowflake so let's just go ahead and put output here on the screen just to give you an idea so now if i go into my snowflake side of things and i check nothing is running nothing is running on my snowflake side so if you go back now and we say hey let's go ahead and run this all right so we're running the right thing uh this is a script through demo we're running and if we go over uh onto uh the snowflake history side we have established connectivity a couple of things i want to call out you can see there is a put command in in here happening and what's happening all of the code that we build the package the dependencies are all pickled up so pickle is a 
Um, you think about it as a almost like zipping uh, the files we have locally. It's uploaded that to Snowflake. It's going to create a function for us, and we can use that function. That's basically bringing all that Python code uh, into Snowflake. So let's go back to our query history here. Uh, uh, the put should have happened, and it's running. It's created a function, and you can go ahead, and you can see a function has been created for us. And this function is a temporary function because I specified it as such. It's called add. And all of that code that we wrote has been picked up and is made available to this function. And now we can invoke this function like any other function uh, in Snowflake. You're already familiar writing functions. This is just another function that anyone in your organization has access to, right? Think about the, the world of data science and the world of analysts really coming into one. This is exciting. This is exciting. The challenge with machine learning had always been in the past was machine learning folks would just use their machine learning code, write Python, and that's all they had. No one else was knowing what they did or could use what they did. Now, everyone in the organization has access to those functions, to those libraries, to those predictions, and everything you're doing, you can bring it to uh, to the community. You can bring it into, uh, into the uh, uh, analytics ecosystem. So it's becoming a team sport. So let's just go ahead and refresh this. Our function has been created and scoring should have happened. And just like that, we have a function in, in, in Snowflake uh, created from Snowpack. And the function was registered. It's not a permanent function. And we have that. Now, this next thing we're going to see here is uh, we register that function as an implicit function. But what if you want to register that as an explicit function? I'm going to show us how we can we can do that. So what we're going to do here is let's just delete this for now. Let's go ahead uh create a new function and we're going to create a new function to take an integer and just double it for us again this is any python uh, method or function you can write it's going to take some input i'm going to uh, multiply by two basically double that and return that as a result for us the difference between this function and this function is we've registered this to uh uh, to Snowflake, and we've created a UDF over there, uh, but this we haven't. This is just to a local function. But what you can do is uh, specifically reuse uh, the session to register this function, and that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to tell the session to say, hey, we've just created a new function. Can you register this function and give it a name? So what we're going to do now uh, is session UDF register. And what are we going to register? We're going to register this function. And what is the name we want? It's going to be called double. So it's going to be called double. So now we have a function which will exist on the Snowflake site called double. And guess what? If you have a function, we can always invoke that function. So you can still go now and say, hey, let's, uh, let's write a query against that function. So you can go now to say, hey, let's select uh from my table and we can apply double to it so whatever attribute is going to be serialized into that function so function as scalar uh um they, they behave on scalar data so you give it an input it does something and give you one output so all the records on that column are going to be serialized it does the work and it gives us a, the result so we're going to call double like we did above we're going to get a result i'm going to print it on the screen so if i go ahead and run that let's cancel this so we're not creating that function again or, or invoking that and in this case we should see a new function called double which we can then use um, above so if we run this uh, it's gonna go ahead run that uh, we've pickled and put things here on the screen uh, it didn't seem to like the function we created so why didn't it like the function we created there might be an issue um and the issue is because that function already exists so this this function already exists so we're gonna change that uh the, the previous function already exists so let's just give it a new name and then uh we run that that way we don't have duplicate uh functions all right so really easy to debug i like that because you can see how we get good error messages and you can go develop the way you normally are developing today but you're doing so with a power of snowflake at your fingertips if that isn't amazing i don't know what this so let's uh let's go back here and we should have uh everything pickled and blob and our function has been created and we should have a new function here called uh double you can see the code and now with this function available 
you can do anything you want with this function. Your entire analytics teams has access to the work that your data science groups are doing in Python. So I think this is pretty, uh, pretty, pretty epic. So if we go back now uh, here, uh, everything should have run. It takes a few seconds for this uh, function to be created, but once it's created, you have that function available to you. So what we've seen here is how we've invoked the function by going through the session, but you don't always have to do it going through the session. You can also do it by just working with data frames. So if you have data frames that are available, you can call this like any other function uh, in the data frame. So you can say, hey, if you had a data frame that you brought in, um, in this, let me comment this out just because it's uh, uh, not complete, but you can uh, invoke that data frame, select and apply that function to whatever uh, attributes you have within that data frame. It's all going to run inside of Snowflake. So really, uh, really, really exciting. Now, this is this is really good. Uh, and you might say, I, I love this. This is this is cool, but I just don't want to do basic uh basic uh, python code that takes a number and doubles it and adds it into two we have more interesting use cases we have xgboost we have time series we have tensorflow and keras and you name it so many packages out there you want to use in your workflow and you're asking is snowpack gonna support that for me and the answer to that is yes so if we go ahead and delete all the basic ones we have uh here uh, if we have a function uh, we have a session, you can create even more interesting uh, function. It doesn't just have to be uh, basic functions like we did. So you can go ahead and do something like, uh, let's go ahead and uncomment this. You can do something like uh, a forecast. And in this forecast, you can import any of the standard packages uh, that exist. So Snowflake is providing thousands and thousands of these packages using Anaconda, which is a package manager. And you can just directly import that uh, within your code and then use that for whatever analysis you're doing. So in, in this simple uh, example here, I might import XGBoost, do some machine learning training, um, or you can just do uh, a scoring of a model. So for example, you might have built a model already, uh, which was uh, picked up. Uh, you can load that model and then use that to score some results in your function. So you have the flexibility to, to do all of that uh, right here within, uh, within Snowpack. Uh, for Python in Snowflake and you say hmm but I want to know what what for packages are out there that Snowflake supports and your question would be answered because if you go into Snowflake go into database go into information schema packages and just query that you're gonna see a list of all the packages thousands and thousands of these packages that are uh, supported out of the box this is not something you manually have to import you don't have to put this into a stage. These are just available for you to just use at your fingertips. So uh, TensorFlow, XGBoost, uh, you name it. Uh, a lot of these packages are already supported out of the box. And all we have to do in this case, again, is just import that and just use that within our function. So if I was doing something more interesting with Keras, uh, instead of uh, uh, XGBoost, uh, we can go ahead and uh, uh, import that with Keras. For example, we might be doing some forecasting. We import Keras. Uh, we have a model that the data science team has built already. It's a pickle model. We can just load that model from a pickle file and we can go ahead and run that. Or if you have a PMM uh, file, a PMML file, you can also uh, import that. So basic line is there is flexibility for you to do all of that, right? And, and Snowpack uh, for Python uh, gives that flexibility. But hopefully you you see uh, the syntax uh, here. Now this is really cool. This is really cool. But we might say, hey, hey, through like that, we've seen how to create UDFs with implicit registration, explicit uh, registration. But what I want to do uh, beyond just importing standard packages like XGBoost or Keras, I want to import my own custom packages. My team, your team has written a lot of Python code. It's sitting all over in the organization. How do we bring that together, reuse that code so we don't have to rewrite it again? Okay, how do you bring those pre-written code and logic into Snowpack so that everyone else can have access to it? And that's what we're going to see here. So assume that you had uh, code uh, sitting somewhere else. You've written that code. You want to get access to it. What we're going to do uh, here is a simple line to say, hey, just simply point to the code you've written. And what Snowpack is going to do is 
it's going to import that for us so you can come into session and you can import if i can get this over here you can import uh, a session uh, you can use add import and what add import will do is you can import specific uh, packages uh, into your environment these are ones that are not already part of the the, the pre uh, uh pre setup packages you can import your own custom packages and what i'm doing here is pointing to uh, a set of python code you don't even have to egg the, uh, the code or do a wheel file uh, because that's going to be require pip just point to the directory where your python scripts are all sitting uh what snowpack would do is it's going to zip that all up and it's going to send it into uh, uh into the snowpack environment in snowflake uh for computation and you can put that into a stage you can put it into a stage so every time you run this code it's not doing the zip and going over the wire that'll be available for you so if you have a lot of code existing code just point to wherever that code is uh, sitting you don't have to zip it up you don't have to uh, uh, package it into a wheel file you don't have to egg it up you just point to that directory snowpack will pick it all up and once you point it to that directory the rest becomes easy so now you can come back to say hey uh from you can come back and import from um, from what you've uh, you've packaged up so you can come back uh, and do import from um, you can say through utils which is what we imported above and if you import star from there you have all of that ready for you to use in your code so I'm getting uh, importing through uh, through utils and here I'm just gonna bring that into my function and you can call whatever method or, or logic you had uh, as part of this right within uh right, right within your udf of course of course uh this udf will not run unless we register it and as i'm sure we all know how to register udfs now uh we can do the uh, implicit registration and just give it a name and we can call this custom and right we go we have a udf uh, ready for us uh to use so all right, guys, this is uh, really exciting. Wanted to keep this short in a very short time just to give you uh, a tip of what you can do uh, with the power of Snowpack for Python at your fingertips. What this means for you is you can write Python code the way you do today. You can go in and take the existing Python code you had and all the business logic you had in there and make that available to your analytics teams. This whole idea of data science and, and uh, data analytics being two separate spaces is just a thing of the past. Snowflake has broken down the walls with Snowpack for Python. The Python teams, the, the, the analyst teams can all collaborate in one platform, seamlessly share code. Uh, an analyst could be using the product of machine learning without even having to write Python. And Python folks now can have uh, can really deliver the value they've always sought. All the machine learning effort they've done, they can easily push that into uh, functions in Snowflake and everyone on the platform can securely access that and use that for writing their code. So hopefully this gives you an idea uh, and a startup for you. Try it out as always. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to go into the comment section below. Let me know. I'll see what I can do. You have been very awesome watching to the end. I have been through. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.